One, two, three. Brilliant. I first started playing in Helensburgh at my local tennis club, Helensburgh Tennis Club down there. Um, so yeah, I mean, they were good facilities, outdoor tennis courts, so nice and cold in the winter and playing through the rain now and again. Uh, the first time I picked up a racket uh, in the wheelchair was at Scotson, uh, so Scotson Leisure Centre indoors there. And I've been training here in Stirling for the last eight or nine years, so uh, I know how, how important it is to have the indoor facilities. Of course, yeah, I mean, I think it's really exciting news for, for tennis in Scotland um, and for the sport in general. You know, it's, it's a lot of money that's, that's, that's been put into to these new facilities and, uh, you know, it could make a big difference in the number of people playing and, uh, you know, the, the standard of, this, of the sport in this country. Yeah, definitely. I mean, nobody wants to be outside in the freezing cold and getting soaked uh, in the winter playing tennis. So, uh, yeah, that's when indoor uh, courts become important and you know, also in the kind of rural, rural areas where the weather is even uh, more extreme, that's going to be important uh, to have those indoor facilities. So. Yeah, it's great, it's great news and um, you know, hopefully it just boosts, boosts the sport. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, you know, every time I come here and train, you see all the youngsters here and the, the buzz around the place is, is always about Andy and Jamie because those are the two guys, you know, the, the faces of tennis in Scotland. So, um, you know, I know they've been an inspiration to me and they're an inspiration to a lot of other young people. So now's the chance to, to build on that and, and try and get more and more people playing. starts again pretty soon, so what are your aims for 2017? Yeah, getting ready to, to head back out to Australia and uh, defend my, my title there. Um, for me, the most important things are to just keep working hard and training this year and uh, keep trying to improve, keep trying to get better and, and keep enjoying it because that's what that's why I got the success I did this year, was, was through enjoying the sport and enjoying the big situations and hopefully I can go out there and do the same next year. Absolutely, uh, we've been working towards this for you know a while now, and uh, you know, it's a case of making the appropriate plans, delivering them to our partners in Sports Scotland and the LTA. Um, you know, aligning all the partners, um, making them feel comfortable with the people involved, making them feel comfortable with the plan, um, and that's what's you know been delivered today. So delighted that the Lawn Tennis Association and Sports Scotland have, have backed uh, the plans and are supporting what we're trying to do. Uh, we can't be successful in isolation um, and uh, you know, so we're really looking forward to now on the back of this resource that's been made available to deliver on the ground for the nation of Scotland. Do you have <coughs> well, we've got quite a detailed facility plan um, which is going to be finalised over the next few weeks with uh, the LTA and Sports Scotland in terms of the funding available and how we're going to um, have, have a bidding process into, towards that. Um, but it's very much based on demand supply, it's looking at um, tennis clubs, it's looking at universities, it's looking at leisure trusts, uh, it's looking at multi-sport operations and local authorities. So you know, it's, a, it's really across the board, it's not a one size fits all um, and there's going to be different solutions for different communities. Um, so you know, I, I would like to take this opportunity to invite um, any um, sports club, tennis club, university, school, local authority, leisure trust, we're looking for partners, we're looking for visionary uh, partners uh, who want to be part of the Murray legacy so we'd be delighted to hear from anyone and we're delighted to work with uh, partners over the next few weeks to see what we can deliver together. The Murray factor has definitely had an impact in tennis, I mean the membership has gone up from 30,000 in 2007 to 54,000 currently so there's been a, a big increase in membership um, however we, we do think there's, a, there's still a massive opportunity to, to have a step change. Um, there's still capacity issues, we still turn people away from competitions, believe it or not, because we don't have the capacity for, in terms of courts. We only have 112 t indoor tennis courts in Scotland, that's one indoor tennis court per 48,000 population, which is worse than, than uh, the rest of the UK, which is one indoor court for 26,000 people, which in turn is worse than Serbia, Germany, Poland, France and Switzerland. So, you know, we need to actually you know, make a difference there. We've got the best players in the world from Scotland, so we now need to give our population and our communities an opportunity to play tennis on the back of that success, participation-wise and capacity-wise, but also in terms of developing performance players. Um, so <clears throat> with only 112 indoor tennis courts, this funding today being announced will make a massive difference in that number. Is it all about boosting numbers playing the game opportunities, say, Well, it's a bit, it's a bit of both. If we can get more people uh, introduced to the game, more coaches, 
uh, better train coaches. You know, we've got some fantastic coaches in Scotland, but we want to invest in that. And Judy Murray does a fantastic job in terms of coach development, education, with and, and with our tennis on the road, building a workforce. So, you know, we, we need to, to, you know, we're also working in partnership with that and, and with Judy, but we need to do more of that to actually increase participation, increase the workforce, increase the facilities, which is you know announcement today. So it's all part of the same jigsaw puzzle basically to put the bits together to increase the number of people playing the game to increase the standard to increase the number of people competing and therefore uh, you know to actually get um, some at the top of the world again in the future uh, and, you know and that that's part of the the ambition you mentioned uh, Judy there as well no, she's a particularly strong back of the park of peer development you know that's just another well, we'd be delighted to see that uh, facility. You know, we've got back that facility, um, and um, you know we, we were part of the inquiry. Uh, we'd love to see that built, that, that facility built. Uh, it makes perfect sense from our point of view in terms of increased capacity, uh, a, a, you know, a bigger competition venue, especially in combination with Stirling University here. Um, as I said, we turn away uh, you know competitors regularly from competitions because we don't have the capacity for for courts. Um, we need a workforce development centre, which you know Parker Care is planning to be, so we can train our workforce, train our coaches, turn good coaches into world-class coaches uh, through Judy and through the contacts that Judy can bring to the table. We've got Leon Smith on our board now in Tennis Scotland. In terms of our, uh, he's the performance director, so Davis Cup captain, huge amount of worldwide uh, experience um, and. and uh, and pedigree, so you know we've got a huge number of very exciting uh, bits of the jigsaw there uh, together. So we'd love to see that facility getting built. Obviously, it's with uh, the planning um, um, consent issues at the moment, so we're hoping to see that over the line. Yeah.